Hello everyone, this is Atijit Das and in this video I'm going to explain what is Kubernetes in the simplest possible way I can think of using an analogy. So first I will go through the analogy and then I will explain what each of the components in the analogy correspond to in the world of Kubernetes. So here is the analogy first. So let's say you are a house owner and the house has 10 rooms and you want to rent out three of those rooms through an Airbnb. So you have two options. You can either put the ad on the website yourself. Then each time somebody books, you will be the one handing over the keys. You will be the one ensuring the rooms are cleaned after a guest leaves. And you will also be the one checking if all the maintenance stuff is done correctly or not. So that is one option you have. There is another option. You can also hire somebody to do those things for you. Okay. So let's say you hire an agent and that agent will take care of all these things. So what you do is you hire an agent and you sign a contract with him and that contract has certain clauses. So for example, in the contract, it can be written that at all times, three rooms should be available for guests to book. Each room should have two beds. Every time a guest books a room, the keys need to be handed over when he's there. And every time a guest leaves, the room has to be cleaned. And then that's it. You don't have to worry about it. The agent will take care of everything. And you also have a phone. And whenever you want to check on what's going on, you can always call the agent. So now what the agent will do is he has his employees to take care of these requirements. So let's say he employs three employees to take care of these three rooms. Okay. So when room one gets booked, the employee one ensures that the booking is done properly and room is cleaned and he's there to you have the keys note that the bed in a room is the absolute basic entity okay a guest needs at least a bed to stay in a room and now the agent keeps all these information for instance information about the employees the number of rooms the beds and everything inside a notebook okay so that notebook is his single source of truth so whenever he has to check on something he always just look at the notebook and see if the requirements are satisfied or not also it makes it easier for him to check if an employee is falling sick or not and if he's sick then he will allocate the rooms to some other employee so when a guest books a room online that booking gets redirected to one of the employees and then it's up to the employee to ensure the cleaning part is done the keys giving part is done and the guest has a nice time in the house one more thing you have an extra clause in the contract with the agent such that in the event of if there is a lot of bookings then he can extend these three rooms on up until 10 rooms because the house has 10 rooms so if there is a lot of requirement then the supply can be extended so so far all these things sound simple right so overall what you did was you achieved some sort of automation on your business by employing this agent and then the agent employs his own employees and then they take care of all the other things and you don't have to worry about anything else. So just like the agent and his employees and his whole, whole ecosystem were able to achieve some sort of automation for the house owner. Similarly, Kubernetes and its ecosystem is able to achieve an automation for an app owner. So the analogy part is over now. I will come to the real world scenario. So let's say you are an app developer, just like the house owner. Let's start from the most basic entity that is the bed in a room. Okay. So the bed is the absolute minimum requirement for any guest. Similarly, when your application runs, it has to run somewhere and it runs in a container. Okay. And just like no bed is going to be outside of the house, right? The bed has to be inside a room. Similarly, a container has to be inside something called a pod so inside a pod your application actually runs and the pods run inside something called nodes or worker nodes so these nodes are actual physical machines inside which these pods run and pod contains containers okay and just like an employee of the agent ensures that the rooms are functional and the electricity is fine and water is fine and everything Similarly, there is something called a kubelet inside a node, which ensures if the pods running inside it are healthy or not. So here the employee can be regarded as the kubelet. And now I will come back to the agent. So the agent corresponds to two different things 
in the world of Kubernetes, Kube Scheduler and Kube Controller Manager. So just like the agent decides which room should be assigned to which employee, similarly, Kube Scheduler decides which pod needs to be running in which node. And this it does uh, based on what is the requirement and what is the availability. And remember, node is just a machine and pod is something that runs inside a node. And just like the agent decides what to do if one of the employees falls sick, so most likely he will redirect his tasks to some other employee, right? He will assign his room to another employee. Similarly, there is something called Kube Controller Manager. And this Kube Controller Manager decides what to do when one of the worker nodes goes down. And as I said, nodes are basically machines, so machines can go down anytime. And just like the agent writes in his notebook about all these details, similarly, there is a data storage called HCD in Kubernetes where all the configurational data is stored. So let's say your requirement is there should be three pods running at all times. Then that's the sort of data that has to be stored in the HCD database. And that is the single source of truth in Kubernetes. And just like the agent can communicate with his employees using a phone similarly there are equivalent concepts in kubernetes so there is an entity called api server just like the agent has his phone similarly each worker node has something called kube proxy just like every employee of the agent has his own phone and all these four things the api server the hct data storage the kube controller manager and the kube scheduler they constitute the kubernetes master now coming back to the contract between the house owner and the agent, the usual equivalent quantity in Kubernetes is called as a deployment. So inside a deployment, which is written in a YAML file. So inside a deployment YAML file, you basically write down things like how many ports you want, what are your requ resource requirements, and then you feed it to Kubernetes. And what Kubernetes does is those requirements are always met. Okay, so if you set that there has to be at least three ports running at all times, and if one pod goes down, maybe because his corresponding machine went down, then it's up to Kubernetes to decide where to schedule the next pod. And Kubernetes achieves all these automations so that you don't have to manually do anything. And remember the extra clause in the agreement, which I mentioned about before, about what to do when there is too much of booking. So the equivalent concept in Kubernetes is called auto-scaling. So if you enable auto-scaling, then Kubernetes will ensure it puts up more and more pods to serve more and more requests. Okay, so your application users here are equivalent to the Airbnb guests in my analogy. So if lots of users try to use your application at the same time, then if you have turned on the auto scaling, then Kubernetes will scale accordingly by putting more pods. And this is something that can also be configured based on your scaling requirement. So you may want to scale based on number of pods. You may also want to increase the resources of each pod. By resources here, I mean the CPU and the memory usage. And of course, you have to put some sort of cap in the auto scaling because you know you can't arbitrarily increase your resources because you don't have infinite amount of money, right? Just like the house has only 10 rooms, so it can only accommodate 10 requests at max. So this is a very brief overview of Kubernetes using a real world analogy. There are plenty of other concepts that need to be covered as well, but this should give you a decent starting point if you're an absolute beginner. You can check out the links below to get further knowledge on this topic. Thank you.